So Australia is well and truly the land of the lizards, with over 600 species from geckos and skinks to the goannas. But this guy here is the biggest. He is the Parenti. And we are lucky enough to be visiting the guys here at Dragon Training Mobile Zoo to share with you a couple of cool facts about Australia's biggest lizard. Stick around. Now, being the largest lizard in the country, this guy is the top of the food chain. This guy eats like a king. As babies, they're insectivorous like most monitor lizards, eating things like centipedes and things like this. But as he grows up, this guy eats anything. He'll eat things like small uh, marsupials right up the sides of wallabies and kangaroos. These guys will eat roadkill. They'll eat birds if they can get them, but a huge part of their diet is other reptiles. That includes everything from venomous snakes to you know, blue tongue lizards, but a lot of his diet is actually other monitor lizards. These guys love to eat things like ridge tail monitors, the tiny little guys. He'll even eat his closest relatives like his sand monitor and, and the yellow spotted monitor or argus monitor, or panoptes as I know it. Uh, these guys will even eat smaller parentes. So yeah, if you're gonna be the biggest lizard in the country, you can eat pretty much whatever you like. Now he finds his prey using a variety of sensors. He's got pretty good eyesight, especially as far as reptiles go, but his most amazing sense is his sense of smell. Now unlike you and me who smell with our nostrils, this bloke here smells with his tongue. You can see him sticking this tongue in and out. Unlike the blue tongue lizards and things like this, this guy has a forked tongue, that hallmark of the monitor lizards or the goannas. And being forked, he's essentially smelling left from right. He's sticking that tongue out in the air, collecting all the sort of chemicals and scent signals, pulling it back into his mouth, and he's able to differentiate which way the smell is coming from. So if a little ridgetail monitor or uh, you know, some sort of hopping mouse has walked through the desert and turned left, the left side tells him. So this guy has an amazing sense of smell to find the food that is out there in Central Australia. Now, goannas in general, but this guy especially, is also fairly unique in that a lot of reptiles really struggle to like run down their prey over a large distance. Things like bearded dragons, even things as big as crocodiles. Basically, they breathe a different way to you and me. They hold their breath kind of when they exercise. But monitor lizards, and the print is great at this, can actually breathe differently. You might see this guy or some of the other goannas we put in videos basically push up their, their throat. They pump their throat up and down. It's what we call a gullet pump. And essentially, rather than sucking air in like you or me, he's able to fill that throat and push air in, meaning he can maintain speed to something like 40 k's an hour which is faster than pretty much any reptile I can think of. So he's able to actively pursue prey in the ecosystem he is. He is Australia's desert's equivalent of something like uh, wolves and coyotes. He's the top of his food chain. As far as his ecosystem goes, these guys, as I said, do live in Central Australia, but not the Central Australia that you might think of in the movies. You see, these guys live in the northern chunk of Central Australia, from Western Queensland through the bottom of the Northern Territory, the very top of South Australia, right through to the West Australian coast. Now that habitat, while it is hot, it's Central Australia, it's arid, it's not the loose red sandy soil you might see on some documentaries and movies and things like this. These guys are really associated with rocky habitats. Places where there's rocky outcrops you can get on up, see where his uh, prey is, places where he can hide, and hard packed clay or rocky soil. Now the reason he likes that soil is these guys live for a large amount of their time in burrows underground. Now, these burrows provide him a place to get away from the heat when it gets you know, up to 50 degrees out there and also a place to spend his winter. These burrows can be massive. They can have multiple entrances and exits. Uh, if they're not being used, they can be used by other animals. And uh, this guy here could winter over in those holes, come back up when the temperature's right and go about his day. Now, once that weather does warm up, Come spring, early summer, which is the wet season across Northern Australia, is breeding season for these guys. Now, like most monitor lizards, the males basically engage in ritual combat. These guys clash chest to chest, put their arms around each other, have wrestling matches over the girls. Once the strongest one's decided, the mating's taken place, a female will lay her eggs, and uh, these eggs take up to 220 days to hatch. So an awful long time. Living where they do, and living alongside human beings for tens of thousands of years, these guys have also developed a sort of important connection with traditional owners or indigenous Australians in a variety of ways. These guys are an important food source. It's a big animal with a lot of meat. Also things like their fat is important ceremonially and medicinally for a variety of reasons. But these guys are also an important part of dreaming stories for certain indigenous groups as well. So they're culturally significant to first Australians. Even the name Parenti 
actually potentially traces back to, to one of the languages from Central Australia for a word Pirindi, which is meant to mean this guy here. So not just cool to us, all Australians, people around the world, this guy has a cultural connection to human beings in Australia dating back tens of thousands of years. Despite this relationship between this guy and human beings dating back tens of thousands of years, it wasn't until 1845 that this species was discovered by Western science or Europeans. Now, what I find interesting is, despite living in potentially the most arid climate on planet Earth, their original scientific name given them to the, by the first biologist was Hydrosaurus giganteus, which literally means giant water living lizard. Now, there's not much water out there. It took 40 years before these guys uh, were reclassified into Varanus giganteus, which means giant monitor lizard, and that is the family that he lives in today. Now, being the biggest monitor lizard in Australia, the biggest lizard in general, he is a very cool animal. I'm glad I got to show you this guy and talk a little bit about the Australian Parenti, and I hope you've enjoyed the video as well. If you haven't already, guys, please make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, check us out on Facebook, and if you could do us a favor and check out Dragon Training Mobile Zoo as well. These guys have been kind enough to let us come and work with some of their animals. It's a big favor to us to take their time to get to work with these amazing reptiles. So head on over to their Facebook page as well, give them a shout out. Uh, check on back next week, there's lots more videos coming, but between now and then, be nice to wildlife, have a good one, and take care.